Hello, good morning. Another sunny morning here in La Union in the Philippines. It's just another quiet day. It's just a little after 8 o'clock in the morning. Very quiet here now. And uh, I'd like to talk about my thought for the day. And my thought for the day is actually, yes, it's about Filipino women and the expectation of the family that <clears throat> many of them, I think if you do your research, you'll discover a lot of educated, or should I say, those that have attended college, not necessarily educated, because the standard here is maybe not quite as high as one would might expect somebody to have gone to university overseas. <clears throat> Hence many rich families send their children to America or to England or Australia to have a graduate education in those countries. And of course obviously that's going to cost many many thousands of American or Australian or English pounds. But the thing to remember here is that <clears throat> it's not just women that uh, end up going overseas to be able to work and uh, become maybe not all domestic workers but some do some are in construction some are in engineering but the majority that we hear about are domestic workers and they have many courses here that teach young Filipinas how to use vacuum cleaners, how to uh, use all the different foreign appliances in a home so that they're familiar with the technique and the ability to become a good employee for their Arab, or mainly Arab, families overseas. Of course you hear of horrendous cases of abuse of these young women and uh, the Philippine government does its best to try and alleviate situations like that. But of course they can't be uh, everywhere. There's been recently just last year, 32,000 people were told that they had to uh, forego their trip overseas because the authorities thought that they may well be human trafficking and uh, therefore, as a protection measure, they prohibited the young lady to travel overseas. And of course, a lot of them have lost their money on the flight over. But the, there is a senator here who is hoping to bring in uh, a situation where they can be reimbursed by BI, which will be really good to know because many have got themselves once again into debt to do so. But what I'm trying to allude to also is the fact that Many young ladies here in the Philippines are expected to care for their elderly family, even to the extent of other siblings, brothers, sisters, who are here in the Philippines living their lives. Some manage to squirrel away the savings that they make while they're working overseas and they're able to send back money specifically to build a home for the family. Now of course we as foreigners come here and we meet these young ladies often who've maybe already done that. They've done their stint overseas and they're now here in the Philippines and whilst their job has stopped because they've decided to 
hitch up with a foreigner as a husband. Therefore, the need to meet the costs of the family has uh, fallen still on the shoulders of that young lady. It might not be written in stone, and it may well be a case of it's an unwritten rule. And for some foreigners, they have an attitude of mind that, well, it's not my responsibility. Well, I'm afraid it's everybody's responsibility in a family over here. It doesn't go just because a foreigner comes on the picture. It's true that if you open your wallet, you surely will be looking at an empty wallet very quickly. So it is up to you to show some sort of regular uh, adjustment to your own budget to take into account sometimes your wife earmarking. We'll call it earmarking some of her day-to-day -day costs um, to send to the family. And of course, with the family, there comes a certain amount of feeling of disappointment if, for instance, other members of the family are doing nothing but uh, lazing around all day and you're becoming a source of revenue for them to have that lifestyle. Because that, does, that really isn't fair anyway on anybody, irrespective of how you think about it. One of the ways, of course, that many of you do, you employ them. You give them tasks that would otherwise cost you money. Now that's fine if you have a property that, for instance, it's part of a, a family property, maybe a small farm, and a farm can be anything from an acre to even bigger. And therefore, many of the family have got different houses or accommodation on that property. And one of those areas is put aside maybe for the daughter to establish a home for herself. And she may well do that with you as a foreigner. This way you, you're providing for the future for your charming wife, but then also for any children that you might have with her or that she has already. So the feeling that somehow because you can't own it should really disappear because in reality it's not relevant. If you're going to look at a relationship with your Filipina just on monetary terms then really maybe you need to look elsewhere as to how you intend to have a relationship with her. There's many, many ways that if you have the fortunate situation where you have quite a lot of money to invest, maybe looking at establishing maybe a small um, business such as a, a resort is a good way to go. Even maybe a boutique hotel on the lines of maybe a motel overseas like in Australia where it's just overnight accommodation because as the Philippines opens up as a emerging country it's important that we also don't forget that there are opportunities to run a family business where you can employ those so-called lazy ones with a job that they get paid a salary to help the whole family to uh, make a living and accommodation is always a good one not so much rental accommodation but something that has day by day or night by night accommodation where you have a quick turnover of money maybe a small restaurant attached and it doesn't always have to be on a beachside property it can be near a city on the way into a city, somewhere where there's a regular flow of clientele going past. 
because here you can rent rooms by the hour and you can imagine what that's for but again it's money it's not a moral issue when you're running a business it becomes more the bottom line and therefore you need to think about these things just like you need to be aware that no matter what you say the responsibility and the the pressures that are brought to bear on the young lady to continue helping the family financially will always be there regardless of what you think and if you're going to find it difficult to handle then it will put pressure upon any relationship you have in the future and uh, it's something you really do need to think about just like uh, Sometimes we get comments from people living in England or Australia who are married with a Filipino and they say, what I'm talking about is a load of rubbish. Well, I'm afraid to those ones, unfortunately you're seeing it through a Western eyes. And we, that's those living here in the Philippines, see it from the same level as those that are here. Your wife may well not have any of those things in terms of tampo and different attitudes because they now have become westernized and they only pick them up if they go back to live permanently there are many there are many um, expats here that come and retire here and they soon discover that their wives fit back into the normal ways of the philippine way once they get back here and then they'll start discovering that some of the things we've been talking about may start rearing their ugly head. And how will you handle it? Will you show her the door like some of you proud guys suggest? Oh, I wouldn't put up with that. Well, then you probably shouldn't have gone with a Filipina. At least of all, given her all that opportunity overseas, only to give her a hard time when she comes back and retires with you here in the Philippines. Because coming back for holidays, coming back to visit friends and family, is not the same as coming back to stay here permanently. So if you like this video, and you like the background, a different walk area, here in my barangay, I uh, invite you to subscribe, uh, give us a thumbs up, and enjoy the sound of the chickens and the barking dogs and the karaoke, which is all part of living here in the Philippines, especially in the countryside. Bye now.